I'm going to presume you've stopped in to talk about penny stocks. Hot penny stocks? Good. You've come to the right place. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, November 28th. Now, what we do on this show is talk about hot OTC and penny stocks. These are stocks under five bucks you can find on any market. And I'm particularly looking for those stocks that can make us money. And when I find those sort of stocks, I'm normally looking at the charts. I spend a lot of time looking at charts and you can see heat in a stock much easier looking at the charts than the news. I can see a volumes coming in, people reacting to it. I can see the price reacting and climbing, getting ready to break out. I can see the technicals are on fire, all going to the moon. That's easy to read, no judgment calls. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to go running around through the news looking for hot news, whether it be a filing or a press release. Whatever it is, when I find a hot piece of news to match my hot chart, wham, we've got ourselves a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to bring to you each day. And I've got some for you right now. So let's jump on into the first one. This is System One, ticker SST. Now she's got a perfect chart, very easy to identify when you're looking for charts with heat. It is an atypical breakout chart. That 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious and starting to level out, price right up underneath it, cutting through, breaking out right now. Now, she's had a lot of news here recently, but nothing in the last few days, but it is good news and she's doing good business. And when your chart is set up like this, you don't miss this opportunity. So SST finished the day at $1.37 with about 1.5% gains. She's on the New York Stock Exchange, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. There's no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks, even if they are penny stocks. And you can trade it pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what does SST do? Well, they tell us here that System 1 combines best-in-class technology and data science to operate its advanced responsive acquisition marketing platform, which they call RAMP. RAMP is an omni-channel, omni-vertical system built for a privacy-centric world. RAMP enables the building of powerful brands across multiple consumer verticals, the development and growth of a suite of privacy-focused products, and the delivery of high-intent customers to advertising partners. They have a lot of their own brands that they advertise, and they are connected with <laughs> virtually every digital ad company and social media out there, all of them. And they are advertising, pulling in money this way. That's how they do their business, by just covering the market with specialty products. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had about a 50% loss is what we had, dropping from 90,000 down to 43,000. Share structure for SST. Well, the only thing they tell us here is the outstanding share count, 93 million, closer to 94. We don't know what the float is. It could be up to 94 million or it could be considerably less. Our market cap, we're up at 126 million. Looking at the financials, all right, looks like they just started making steady revenues in 2021, coming on the board with $688 million. We know that's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. At the end of 2022, they were up to $826 million, getting to keep almost a quarter billion dollars as profit. Quarterly. All right, a year ago, they were at 219 million and it looks like they have been falling. And I just checked their most recent financials. They're a little confusing to me. They say they did 82 million the last quarter, but they compare it to September of last year and say they did 156 million. Well, I'm looking right here seeing 201 million. So I don't know where that 156 came from. And I was trying to put it into shape, try to figure out what they were talking about. I couldn't figure it out. So they say that they did 82 million this last quarter, which would be a huge drop if these numbers are correct. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. At the end of June, 2023, they had about 20 million in the bank, just over a billion dollars in assets and liabilities about three quarter billion. So that gives us $327 million in stockholder equity. Now, what does this mean to you, stockholder equity? You hear me say it all the time and I say, oh, that's a good thing. 
Would you want to know what a basic price of the company stock should be? Well, this is how much equity they have in the company, stockholder equity. All you got to do to get a basic feel is take that number, 327 million, and divide it by the outstanding share count. In this case, they had about 93 million shares. So 93 million into 327 million is a little over three. So you're looking at a little over $3 a share. And we're at $1.36. This company looks undervalued to me. Taking a look at those disclosures, we do have a new investor that just came in. These are filed whenever somebody buys enough shares, they become basically a partner with the company. They own a percentage of the company. This is Kane Holdings. They purchased about 27 million shares. That gives them 28% of the company. That's a big deal. Then we have a Form 4. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares, and they can do that in a lot of various ways. We're most interested when they buy them or sell them. This is neither. It's not a P for purchase, and it's not an S for sale. It's an F for something else. They're dealing with vesting of restricted shares. So that doesn't really have anything to do with us either. And then you've got your most recent 10Q here. I did dive into it. I was trying to make heads or tails of their revenues. There is a lot of information in there. I'd like to say it's easy to read. Sometimes it isn't. But if you want to know, there it is for you folks. So let's dive into that news now. So we've got three pieces of news here and I want to jump into each one of these. We have one on September 6th, which is a very strange piece of news. It sounds like good news. When you look at the chart, it ran from about a buck 85 up to $3 and the very next day it fell to a dollar four. I don't get it folks. It seems like good news. You tell me when we read it. Then we've got one here on the 17th of October and the 21st of November. That one that had the stock jumping, System One announces today that it has received interest from Just Develop It Limited regarding the possible acquisition of Total Security Limited. This company wants to buy Total Security Limited from this company. Now, I didn't see Total Security Limited listed in their subsidiaries. They had total EV and total ad block, but I never saw this one. But in either case, they must have it. And the uh, company just developed it limited is offering 240 million in cash for this. That sounds real good to me. Now they don't give us a whole lot of information here about when, if, how, where, nothing. Just that interest has been shown and the stock ripped and then it fell really hard. That next piece of news came out on uh, October. System One announced a strategic partnership with, I'm going to call this Ecosia, <laughs> a leading green search engine. System One has entered into a strategic partnership to power search results for Ecosia, a green search engine that reinvests 100% of its net profits into climate action initiatives. The new deal with Ecosia highlights System One's reputation as a trusted source of syndicated search solutions for leading search engines, which ultimately benefits tree planting projects around the world and other green initiatives. That's the way this company works. I've never heard of a search engine that is ecologically sound, but that's what we've got here. And the last piece of news, this one came out on the 21st of November. System One's Road Warrior app introduces new proof of delivery for packages, launches new marketplace for subscription add-ons. System One Inc. announced today that its Road Warrior app, a MapQuest acquisition, you've heard of MapQuest, they own it. How it works, they own it. Info.com, it's theirs. <laughs> Um, Road Warrior app, a MapQuest acquisition that optimizes complex delivery routes to save time and fuel for drivers, has now introduced a proof of delivery feature in connection with the launch of their new marketplace. Proof of delivery allows for photos to be taken and signatures to be collected by drivers within the Road Warrior mobile app during package drop-offs. With proof of delivery, 
Drivers can add delivery notes, such as location or placement for unusual drop-offs, while signatures and photos taken via the mobile app sync directly to delivery dispatchers, who can view delivery and confirmation details in real time within the web app. And I've got to presume, though they haven't said it here, the consumer, the end person who gets the package, also gets this information. I'm only presuming. They haven't said that here. I'm excited to announce Road Warrior's new proof of delivery add-on feature that many of our users have been asking for, just in time for the busiest online shopping and delivery days of the year, Christmas. Proof of delivery makes Road Warrior a much more complete solution for last mile logistics and delivery businesses. Proof of delivery is the first feature to launch within the Road Warriors new marketplace for feature-specific subscription add-ons. And our team is now working on developing additional features that continue to meet our growing subscriber base's evolving needs. I think it's a neat thing. You know, I don't know if pictures are gonna help, but there's a lot of times it has been delivered and then someone pirated it right off of your steps. Or it got left under a tree in the rain and it's dissolving. So this could be a very neat product and it is subscription-based, they're gonna make money on that. So they've got a lot of different things they're doing and I don't know how they're making all their money, but they're making revenues, they're in the black, they're doing business and the chart is set up. And that's the real reason we're looking at it. Let's go take a look at that chart. We're now taking a look at ticker SST, Systems One Inc. And we're going to be doing our charting for this stock and all the other stocks on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So this is a six-month, four-hour view. We've got our high back here in June of $4.86 and then a long, drawn-out fall to September when we hit our low of $1.04. Now there's that huge run on that news of them selling their subsidiary for 240 million. She jumped from $1.85 up to three bucks. Didn't stay there long, came right back down, but not just to where she started from, way down to that low bubble of $1.04. Now because she's so far away from that 200, all she can really do is go sideways. She had a little breakout here over the 50, whoop de doo <laughs> came back down and has been sitting here waiting patiently for that 200. Once it got close, she went up, sniffed, make sure it's what it seems to be, came back down. We got our directional intentional spike. Not a huge one, but it is an indicator that it wants to break out. It went up through all the SMAs, through the 200, not as high as I would like it, but it is an indicator because when it came down, it did not come down any lower than where it started. So now I'm going to be watching it. She came down to her 200 day haul and then launched off of this one, two, three, four days ago. And she has put herself over top of that 200. Now this is a beautiful run. We don't have any special volume here to be pushing it right now either. Our oscillators are pretty strong. Our PPO has had a crossover three days ago and pushing up just like our MACD. And our RSI is up at 58, though she has had just a wee bit of pullback right now. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Lots of volatility here. She's under the 200 with this low of $1.12. She gets up on top, jumps from about $1.19 up to $1.40. Came right back down to this same area, stayed down here for a few days. And then like we said, four days ago, she took off and she's been running strong. She is floating on her nine day SMA. Although this afternoon she has had some pullback and it looks like she could actually be underneath her nine day. I'm really not crazy about that. All the other SMAs are looking great. They're all spread out evenly, going up, crossing the 200. It looks sound. Oscillators had a lot of strength, but this back half of the day are starting to pull them all down. We have had a negative crossover in our MACD, and our RSI has fallen virtually from the overbought of 70 down to 55. Looking at our five day, five minute. Well, that's not a bad chart. That's the way you want to see the charts look for all the stocks you own. You want to see the low bubble in this corner, $1.14, high bubble in this corner of $1.44. You're looking at roughly 20, 25% gains here in the last five days. So she just barely came under the 200 here of making this low bubble. She has primarily been above the 200 all this time, pushed away here, what is this, three days ago, started climbing, paying heed to the 50-day SMA. Here, she has broke it. 
Now she broke it strong here and she bounced right up. Only one bar, five minutes. Now we've got multiple bars coming down. This looks like it could easily be coming down to our 200, folks. Let me jump back, see if there's anything, $1.31. Let's see if there's anything here on a different one. All right, she's broke the 50 on the 15 minute. She's below that. Let's go back a half hour. She's broke the 20. I'm not liking this. How about that one hour? Was there anything there to catch her? No. Everything is down there at the $1.30, $1.31 area. So I'm going to presume if I was trading this, I'd be watching for this to come down to the 200. Look for a bounce. Once it hits it, I want to see one, two, three green bars going the opposite direction off of this 200. Then I feel she is now bounced. She is legitimately climbing. That's when I would look to get into it. So maybe some, now you got to remember, this is going to be climbing tomorrow. It's not going to be at a buck 31. We don't know where it's going to be. We're just watching for the price to come down to that 200. Oscillators, they're very weak right now, folks. Our PPO is at a crossover pushing down just like our MACD. It's even crossed the signal line. Woo! Mm. RSI is down to 31 right now. And there is my pattern I look for on my ADX trend continuation. You get a straight line whenever your trend is going one direction. As soon as your trend changes, the direction of your line changes. Well, when this is going up and my PPO is coming down and they're coming together, I know for sure, an absolute fact that my price is falling. And it works exactly the opposite. When you see the PPO going up and the ADX going down and they're getting further apart, guaranteed your price is climbing right now it is falling so i'd be looking for that buy opportunity for when she bounces off of that 200. sst she's got things going on she has got good business she is making money everything isn't hot 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 except the chart and that's what i'm playing technicals so if you want to play technicals with me put sst on your watch list this next company we're taking a look at, ticker LRSV, Link Reservations, caught my attention for all the wrong reasons. First off, her chart isn't hot. She's in preliminary stages of breaking out of an atypical breakout chart. She's just now getting over the 50. She's got a ways to go before she hits the 200. But what caught my attention were the technicals. They're on fire. Every single technical is on the verge of breaking out. And we know the price follows the technicals. So that's primarily why I'm looking at this stock. Now, when I came over here looking for a catalyst, I wasn't let down. I did find a hot catalyst. It just hasn't been warmed up in a while. This is how it lays out. It was back in March of last year. The company had a change of control. A gentleman came along and he bought up enough shares that he owns the controlling interest of the company. He's in charge now. What well, turns out, he owns his own company down in Florida. Well, March of this year, his company merged with Link. Now, I'm not quite sure how it's all panning out because we haven't had any news since that news in March. But it is big news. It is hot news. The company is making money and the charts technicals are hot. So that's why we're looking at the company, the dark horse. So Link finished the day at 0023 with just over 20% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those two green ticks we're always talking about. So she's got her validated information. And they tell us that she's a shell risk. Now this means they're in business, but they're not reporting any revenues. Well, first off, they are reporting revenues. But beyond that, the company isn't happy with that fact. They tell us here, I found this in their most recent financial, from the date of incorporation, March 3rd, 2023, Link Reservations has had ongoing operations and is therefore an issuer. And that is not and has never been a shell company or ever was a former shell company. So obviously they've been making money all along the way. So we're not going to pay any mind to that. So what can we learn about this company? Well, this is their new description. The description I was familiar with was them selling pet products and nutraceutical products with mushrooms and other things. I don't know what's up with that aspect of the business because it's not mentioned here. They tell us here that Lynx Reservations acquisition of global enterprise and logistics created a new wholly owned subsidiary of the company via a share exchange on March 3rd, 2023. 
Global Enterprises and Logistics is a provider of refrigerated freight forwarding and individualized logistics for a wide spectrum of clients in the wholesale and retail food industry, including hotel and restaurant industry. Globo has continued to grow year over year, servicing 65,000 customers for the past 12 years and delivering over three quarters of a million loads, strategically listed in Miami, Florida. And this company as well is listed in Miami, both companies that just merged together. Now, as I said, I've gone through reading all this, I couldn't get any hints on what Link is doing with their business. So I can't help you there. Some more research is definitely gonna be needed. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We had a little increase, that 40,000 we lost on the first company we looked at came over here, jumping from 162,000 to 220,000. Share structure for Link, please. Ooh, we've got just under a billion shares, 944 million. Insiders got the most of them. 654 million. That's a lot of shares for the insiders. Unrestricted, I like to think of that as the float. Subtract the insider shares from the outstanding, you end up with what we get, 290 million. Not exactly a small float. It's an average float, folks, 290 million. Financials for the company. All right, there's their annuals. They have nothing coming in at all. Looking at their quarterly, they tell us a year ago they were doing $2 million. Then in September, a year ago actually, they were losing money, $4.2 million. Then they went belly up at the end of the year, zero. Then at the beginning of this year, they started making revenues, $2.9 million, $2.6 million, and they got to keep 100% of it. Now that's confusing to me. They didn't pay anything for this. Well, I know with logistics, you got fuel bills at least. So I'm not quite sure how this money is coming in right now. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. Well, look at that. We've got $1,000 in the bank. We've got 1.6 million in assets and 2.4 million in liabilities. That means we are holding deficit stockholder equity. We are holding a deficit of $714,000. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. We don't have anything here since 2015. So let's just jump on into that news. Now, as I said, the way I remember the company, they were working with pet products and mushroom products, but that's way back in 2021. It was in March of 2022. They had that change of control. It was actually June of 2022. They told us about their intent to acquire Global Enterprise, and then it was in March of this year, they announced the acquisition. Jumping on over here to take a look at this news, they tell us that the company is pleased to announce that on May 9th, 2023, the company successfully completed the acquisition of Global Enterprise and Logistics, which is now a wholly owned subsidiary of the company which kind of answers a lot of questions there. This is a merger, the two coming together. It's not a takeover where one has to leave and the other one takes over. So obviously Link is still gonna be doing whatever it is they were doing before. They're just not addressing that in any of these news presses. They go on to tell us that strategically situated in South Florida, Global is on the doorstep of the busiest cargo and freight airport in the United States. With the closing of the Global acquisition, Link has begun preparations to become a reporting company by filing a Form 10 in the near future with further plans to uplist the company to the OTCQB. Well, good for them. Everybody on the pink says they're uplisting. Just take that for granted. Everybody says it. And you've got to take that with a grain of salt. Don't think of that as a catalyst. But we do have a new company that's come in here. Both companies are in business. Both companies are making money. Both companies are in Miami. Something's got to come from this. We just haven't heard anything. In a long time, since March, we have heard nothing. But the chart is setting up right now. So this is a dark horse. This is one we're going to keep our eye on, put it on our watch list. If things keep going the way they are, we could see a nice strong run. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're now taking a look at Link Reservations, ticker LRSV. And this is a six month, four hour view. Not a real exciting chart. She's been drooping the entire six months. 
These are our 52 week lows and highs. Six months ago in March, we were at 1.1 cents, and then we hit this freaky low in August of triple zero two. She dropped almost a thousand percent before bouncing back up. Then she fell down here, and we are sitting down there at roughly two cents. And we got another strong resistance support line here up at three cents, just up underneath that 200 day SMA. Now, as you can see, she hasn't been doing a whole lot of anything but riding that support until now. She has now pushed away, gotten up on top of that 50. It's looking strong, just not real strong until you look down at the technicals. We've got a crossover on our PPO. Our MACD just crossed the signal line with green bars getting bigger and bigger. Our RSI has jumped from 44 to 64 and everything is still pointed up. No, it doesn't look like a huge tsunami, but it looks like the waves are building right now. Get your surfboard, get out there. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So she's riding flat on top of that support and had that nice bounce. Each bar higher than the one before. Everything is looking strong. Osculators still all pointing up. Every single one of them is looking picture perfect. Five day, five minute. Not going to be a lot to see here, just a picture perfect chart without a lot of trading. And that's the situation here. It isn't getting a lot of trading. We're not getting a lot of volume. The chart is set up. We do have big news, but it's very, very stale. I'm expecting something to come out, but God knows when. They want to uplist. We just had a merger. We know they're making money. We need some catalyst to come out on the table. The chart is set up right now. All I'm saying, folks, is put LRSV on your watch list. Because the truth of the matter is, I don't expect this stock to run tomorrow. Maybe not this week. It needs a catalyst. It is primed. We've got big news. The chart's looking good. Things are building up. Get in the queue. Just put the ticker on your watch list so when the volume comes, you already know what we're looking for. Last stock we're taking a look at, I'm sure you know, this is SoberSafe, ticker SOBR. Now her chart, it's in a turnaround right now. She just hit an all time low not too long ago. She's bouncing off of that. And in that bounce, the price is rising. All the technicals are turning. It looks like it's finally going to start coming back and it should. She just had hot news come out. Now, in case you're not familiar with what Sober does, this is a company that has two pieces of technology that can detect alcohol in your system non-invasively. You don't have to use blood, urine, spit. You don't even have to use your own breath. It actually just measures the vapor off of your skin. It's as simple as touching a button, which recognizes your fingerprint when you touch it, so you're identified, and it can read the alcohol in your system simply with that touch. So maybe you're going to work, or driving a bus, or getting behind a taxi, or an airplane. You're going to have to touch one of these, and boom, they know if you have any alcohol in your system or not. And every person that uses it, there is a subscription paid for that person. You buy the unit, and then pay a subscription for every person. Well, they've got a second product, which is a wristband, which does the same thing, but it's got extra things it can do. GPS, it can track the person wearing it, and it has a tamper-proof mechanism on it. And if you remove it, a warning goes somewhere. And you're thinking, why would you want that? Well, think of the penal system. Anybody that gets out of prison isn't allowed to drink and they have to come in and do your analysis and all this scheduling and people. Now they can just wear this bracelet 24 seven without ever having to go in and everybody will know if anybody's been drinking. And again, you can use this for your drivers and your pilots of the vehicles that are carrying us 24 seven. So we know when they have alcohol in their system or not, I think it's going to catch fire. Imagine if the car companies take it on and put it into their cars. You may not like it, but it may get to be that way. Uh, mothers Against Drunk Drivers, they darn sure want it. And what about the penal system? Do you think they may want something better than this antiquated uh, come in and pee in a cup for a system? I think so too. So that's why we're looking at this company. They've had big news come out that has just covered a new milestone. They don't think it's really big. I think it's humongous. I mean, they see it as huge, but they think it's just a small pebble in a much longer road. So Sober finished the day 
just under 71 cents and just under 12% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ, so she's free to trade. You can average down without having to spend any extra money. Get out for free. You can trade her pre-market, aftermarket. Watch for the activity during those periods. So we've already talked about what the company does. What was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a little bit of an increase. And I do mean little because we're dealing with little numbers. We jumped from 82,000 to 134,000. What's that give us? About 50. So we got over 50% increase. It's not a lot, but it is an increase. Share structure for sober. Oh, we've got ourselves a decent share structure here. Outstanding share count is only 18 and a half million. I like that. Our float is never going to be higher than that, so it's not going to be higher than 18 million and could be considerably less. So we're looking at a really nice float. Market cap for sober, we're at just about 12 million. Financials. Well, as you can see, they just started coming into money at the end of last year. They had $35,000 and they got to keep 50% of that. Looking at the quarterlies, picking up where they left off at the start of the year, they did $47,000. Now, I don't know what that full annual was. That could have just been one quarter. It could have been a whole year. But we exceeded last year's annual revenues by $10,000 here. And now we've fallen back down to it, $37,000. So we're not really seeing a lot of revenues come in here. And when you think about this, for every million people that sign up and use this system, I don't know what, what they're charging. Let's just say it's $20 a head every single month. Well, if they had a million people, that's $20 million a month that the company would make. They sign up 10 million people across the entire nation, all these corporations and all these businesses, and you're charging, oh, they dropped the price now to $15. Well, 15 times 10 million, now you're talking $150 million a month, a month. So this business has the potential to really explode. We're just not seeing it yet. Taking a look at that balance sheet, any explosions over here? Cash and cash equivalents, we've got about five and a half million in the bank, roughly. Total assets, 9.3 million. Liabilities are less, 3.5 million. That gives us real stockholder equity, 5.8 million. Divide the shares, what, what did they have? About 8 million, 18 million. Divide 18 million into that, that'll give you an average price of what we should be at. Taking a look at the disclosures for Sober. All right, we've got a 144 here. That's some base information. That's really nothing to do with us. An 8K, which we're going to take a look at in the news. They were contacted by the NASDAQ. They have been under a dollar for too long. They've been given a warning. If they don't fix this in the next six months, they could end up back on the OTC. That's what happens if you fall out of grace with the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. They just throw you down to the OTC until you get it right. But they do talk to us about that news that just came out a couple days ago. And then we have a Form 4 here. Let's see. I don't know if I looked at this Form 4. Oh, it's another one of those that doesn't have anything to do with the sale or purchase. This has to do with vested, restricted shares as well. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's go take a look at our news now. So we've got three pieces of news here I found interesting. Um, and I'm going to go through them backwards, actually. Sober Safe clarifies NASDAQ deficiency notice. And they're letting everybody know, we have six months to get this right. Now, that's normal. It's nothing special. This is what everybody gets. And most people don't write a news press about it. But they're trying to help the stock price. Let's give the people some hope. A lot of people don't understand that, you know, they think this is perilous right now. Well, actually, our price is what? 70 cents, 71 cents. All we got to do is break a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 days consecutively. That's how you get out of the hot water. Once we do that, we could go back up under a dollar and this whole process would start over. So that's what we're after. And they're just clarifying that. And that can be a catalyst. The next piece of news came out on the 16th of this month. Sober Safe continues behavioral health inroads with new inward winning customer. We're going to look at that one. And then the big one, this is the one I think is hot. California courts are approving the use of Sober Sure for alcohol monitoring mandates. I think when you get the government involved, you're really going to start making some money. 
So taking a look at these news presses, this is the one that came out on the 16th. Sober Safe continues behavioral health inroads with new award-winning customer Turning Point Behavioral Health Care Center, serving 1,400 Chicago area clients each year. Now, not all of those clients are going to be using this because they deal with children as well. So that's just how many they work with. Turning Point is initially deploying Sober Check in its Skokie outpatient facility to ensure clients are alcohol-free upon entry. They've got a specific purpose in mind for this. Using SoberSafe will allow us to ensure that our drop-in crisis guests are unimpaired and able to fully participate in our personalized services. So that just meets one criteria for one organization. And the other piece of news, this came out on the 18th of October. The company today announced that multiple California judges have approved the SoberSure wearable band for court-ordered alcohol monitoring creating a precedent for replacing legacy solutions, outdated stuff that cost everybody more money and time, like breathalyzers and ankle bracelets and peeing in a cup. Sober Sure is a compelling new solution for a mandated monitoring. It has continuous passive monitoring, no inconvenient administration or scheduled testings, non-invasive, hygienic, no breath, blood, saliva, or urine required. <laughs> Discreet, fitness-styled wristband. No bulky, stigmatized, and uncomfortable hardware. If you've ever seen anybody wearing an anklet, you know it stands out. This is just a bracelet, and you can even put a band over it so nobody even sees it if you want. But it definitely doesn't stand out as anything. SoberSure also features app-based alcohol detection alerts pinpoint location tracking, and band removal notifications, as I was saying. And that's what the courts want to know. They want to make sure they've got control. So if you take it off, they want to know you took it off. We acknowledge that this is a small sample size and laws vary by state. But this is incredible progress for and validation of a product that has been on the market for a very short period. Now, I've always been excited about this company. My brother-in-law is in invested in it. He's excited about it. I think it's going to be hot. Now, I would have swore there was news over here about MAD. Where is that? Uh, Mothers Against MAD, weren't you here? I I'm, may not have been here, but I read it somewhere. But they do have the backing of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And I think they're going to get the backing of a lot of organizations. Drunk drivers cause damage to a lot of people's lives, not just their own. And it's one thing for it to happen to them, but when they're behind the wheel of the bus driving your kids, that can't be tolerated. So I'm sure laws are going to change, mandates will be put in place, and companies like this, which are already proving themselves, are going to end up at the top they're going to end up being the big people. And think of how many people could sign up subscribership every single month. And companies are going to pay for it. Maybe they'll have it deducted out of your paycheck. Who knows? All right. Let's go take a look at the chart for sober. That is a big chart for sober. Ticker SOBR. We're looking at a one-week, three-year chart. And I've done this for a couple of reasons. First off, it gives you an idea of where the stock was a long time ago. Long time ago, meaning uh, January of 2021, we had a high of $21. We came crashing down to this resistance support line right here of 88 cents. And you can see she has been there a very long time. And that's the one we're going to be referring to. We've also looked at this stock a couple of times. We looked at it October of last year and we looked at it March of this year. She took a nice jump after we looked at it the first time. She took a dip the second time. At least I think it's a dip. Hard to tell on a weekly chart. Every bar covers a week, so who knows where it went. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. Now our high is $2.55. This is just after when we looked at it on March 28th. 
So we did get a rise. We got a small bump. We looked at it at about uh, 230. She went up to 255. That was short lived. She crashed hard down here to a buck 45. Wrestled with the 200. She keeps beating her head over it, and now she's pulling away, getting farther and farther away from the 200, which is really desperate. Now that low bubble right there is an all time low. She's never been this low before. And with this company, that would be a flashing for sale sign. There's value in this company. Now we don't see it in the equity, though they have equity. We're at five and a half million stockholder equity. That's good. Revenues aren't that strong, but you've been doing the math with me, right? Do some research. I don't remember what they charge per person that touches that button. Every single person has to be charged and there are millions and millions and millions of people that are going to be charged that. That adds up to millions and millions and millions of dollars a month. It's just imminent. It's going to happen. And now that you got the courts giving them recognition, all it takes is a car company next. And this thing is going to tear it up. So yeah, she's been in a downtrend the last six months, hitting this all time low. And right now she is bouncing off of that. Just working away steady. There's no big rush here. She's crossing all of the SMAs. She's got over that 50. She's not slowing down. She's picking up momentum and she is underneath this very, long, long resistance. She is coming up to it right now. We need to get over that. Things can be different when we get up over top of this. There's our 200. This uh, resistance is at 76 cents. Our 200 is at about 93 cents. So we're within 20 cents there, which she could rip very easily, folks. That's not a hard thing to do. Plus, we have the catalyst of the investors getting excited to prevent this from going down to the OTC. If we can get it up over a dollar, and you'd be amazed how many stocks I see once they get over a dollar, next thing you know, you look at them, they're over $3. And it's like, whoa, that made a huge difference. It does. That's called investor sentiment. You got to get the investors feeling good. And there's been a lot of sober investors who really believe in the company, but the charts are bringing us down. And right now, she's about ready to give us hope if she can get over this resistance. Our volume, it's nothing special right now. Our oscillators, they are looking good. Every single one of them is pushing up. And in case you didn't notice, I know you wouldn't, but this is our 200 haul. You see how it's purple? It's purple when it's coming down. When it turns blue, it is either flat or going up. That is change trend. Now this is important because the 200 haul, which most of you don't use, the penny stocks are respecting right now. I don't know why, but they are. And this is now turning around. So I think that is a very strong sign. All of our osculators, our SMAs, everything is looking prime here. We just need some volume. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Go look at that drop. And I don't really know why it dropped here, folks. I didn't check the news out, but it fell on the 9th of November from 77 cents ooh, down to that 40 cents. Lots of volume on the negative side. People are really upset here. Maybe that was when the NASDAQ notice came out. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why the company responded because this is the way the investors responded. And now off of that low bubble, we are climbing. We're pushing ourselves through the 200, nice and steady, approaching that resistance. Here comes all of our SMAs. Now they're looking good, right? On our hourly chart, everything is looking strong. 200, 50, 20 day, all crossing the 200 day SMA. This is looking primed right now. As a matter of fact, the last few days, we have had stronger volume than before, but nowhere is near as strong as it was when it was selling. Our osculators, PPO is still climbing up. MACD is strong, but she's pulled back just a wee bit, though she's only going sideways and not down. And our RSI is actually climbing right now, jumping from 60 to 65. Imagine that, after hours. Coming down to our five day, five minute. Oh, what a luscious chart. <laughs> what a launch. So, wow. So our low bubble is above the 200, way up here. She was at, uh, God, where were we? 71. That must be at the end of that big drop. She came down here to 55, did not touch the 200, bounced back up. She was on top of her 50, lost footing on her 50, came down to the 200. Looks like the 200 held her. 
She's struggling underneath like a monkey hanging on, but she is not letting go of that 200. And right now she's pushing away. You can see these long pillars going down through that 200 into the ground, building up a tower to build on. And then as soon as she got those pillars, boom, she tested it with a big strong one and says, yeah, that can support me. Came back down and now we're bouncing. Boink, 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 right up that hill. That's the way I see it, folks. I'm not just telling the story. These big red bars that come through all of the SMAs through the 200 down deep with wicks, then come right back to where they were. As far as I'm concerned, that is a telltale sign that I'm going to climb. Then this, is, this would be a test. Jump way up high, come down and land on it. Actually, it did not come down lower did it. So this shows strength. It is fond of it. So this really looks good to me. That is a steady growth riding on our 50 day. She tested it. She's bouncing up. Everything looks prime. Our uh, oscillators show they were testing as well. You can see they came down and bounced right there. Coming up, ooh, we did have a crossover on our MACD. It bounced off the signal line and is climbing. And we had a serious bounce in our RSI from 41 up to 55, and it's back down to 53 right now. But I like Sober. Personally, I like the company. I've done the math, and to, as you've heard, the math to me has sold me. They've got technology that is in, uninvasive. That is great. Nobody wants to breathe or pee or spit. Nobody. So just touching it, you can't get an argument from a person unless they know they got alcohol in their system. And they're going to be charged for every single person that uses this. They'll make money selling the equipment, but that's not where they make their money. It's that every single month, these people are going to be using this. So we're going to charge you every single month. And I see that as being huge. And when you get car companies, every car company needs somebody to make it standard. Who are they going to go to? Are they going to invent the technology themselves? Or are they going to go to somebody like Sober? You're darn tootin' they're going to go to Sober. Who's the penal system going to go to in the courts? To companies like Sober that have proven their products. And getting the courts to mandate it, boy, that's good validation. So yeah, in case you can't tell, I'm sold on Sober. And I think this is a bounce back. Whether it's going to be the strongest one we see in a while, I don't know. But things are turning for her. And if you want to average down, now might be a good time. We've just hit an all-time low and we're bouncing off of it. You don't want to look back and say, darn, I should have picked some up. Right? Do some more due DD on the other companies. I think you'll be impressed with them too. But put them all on your watch list. If volume comes up, you can refer back to my video to find out what's going on. Remember, folks, it's all about how much you know. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.